Kutam Milurudi Zuamid. Welcome, friends. I've got some wonderful news, but first I feel I should warn you that things might get a bit noisy in the background today. I've just purchased something, and the company have sent a couple of workmen round to set it all up for me. Graham, They'll I'm be in and out, but I have floor. impressed upon them Please. how important it is that I have quiet. Oh my! No, you Oh, ah well, on to the news. As you know, I was struggling somewhat with the dwarves when last we looked in on Labour Lord. They dug their big hole, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why. But I finally worked it out. Do you see it? It's a stage! Set in the land to keep it out of the lakeside wind, up on struts for easy dismantling. Clearly, I have had a positive influence on our little dwarven thespians. Oh, with the prospect of Shakespearean oration in the future, I simply had to invest in a better sound system. Which uh, brings us to that racket. Still can't believe he brought a rock troll. Though I've got nothing against rock trolls, of course. Salt of the earth, sometimes literally. Ah, come in. Right, Mr. C. Graham will bring the rest of your system inside, I hope. Then we'll just set to finding the best places for the speakers for that full surround sound experience. Wonderful. But I feel I must stress that I'm going to need quiet whilst you proceed. Oh, that's a shame for you. I have been known to whistle while I work. Well, well I suppose I could retire to my study. All right. Here. It wouldn't happen to be a kettle in there, would there? A kettle? No, of course not. No. Well, what about the kitchen? Well, yes, of course there's a kettle in the kitchen. Lovely! I'll have a cup of tea, milk and three sugars. I shall have cup. You drink tea? No. I'm pickish. Oh, well, fair enough. That's two cuppers, one sends puck. And since you mention it, I wouldn't say no to something to nibble on. I, 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 I'll get the kettle on. Ooh, is this your world? What? Don't mention a destiny. I, yes, you don't think much of I yourself. Mean, that is my world. Poor. Oh, quite the undertaking those dwarves have undertook. Hmm? Oh, yes, quite. Oh, sorry about the wait. I had the kettle on before I remembered I'm a god with the ability to manifest anything. I thought that dwarves couldn't float. Well, they aren't known for swimming particularly well, this is true. But they only live by the lake, they don't go in. And honestly, with the plays, I imagine they won't look twice at other forms of entertainment. Oh, it's a stage! That's what the sound system's for. Uh, precisely. That seemed pretty dumb to me. I beg your pardon? Yeah, what are you on about, you walking clod? I just saying. Why take all that time to build a ship if you's not gonna take it out on the lake? A ship? Oh, dear. <gasps> well, I have withdrawn to my study. Not even the smell of old books and pipe smoke can soothe me, though, I fear. A blasted boat! Of all the ridiculous things to build! Uh, no, calm yourself, Flemothy. <sighs> there are fortress matters to attend to, so let's get started. The first of which is the addition of two new migrants. A married couple by the names of Mebzuth and Thob. Mebzuth is an incredibly talented gem cutter and setter. I already see Nil going to him for pointers. It is very bluff and incredibly loud, which is rather unpleasant, but the dwarves spending all their damn time out on the surface with their blasted boat... <sighs> Mebzuth's wife, Thob, 
is as far from different to her husband as it is possible to be. Quiet, polite, and pusillanimous, which in fact means timid. Because there's a group that really needs a lengthy descriptor that sounds like a dictionary sneezing. As she says she's overbearing, but that sounds far too much like Mebzoth talking. And I think it ultimately good that Fath seems to have taken a shine to her. As for what she can do, we did ask, but she was far too modest to opine. So we've got her making wood blocks with her new friend. With this pair, and the fact that I'm sure there shall be more new faces, Locum, Neil and Degel have begun work on some new sleeping quarters. Individual bedrooms, no less. And yes, I pushed for the spaces to be underground to get the dwarves away from that ridiculous project on the surface. The fact that I had to push at all should go some way toward proving the weirdness at work on the silken waters. Oh, and regarding the boat, I figured if you can't beat them, at least make them build a shipyard shack next to the dry dock to expedite the process. I don't for a moment see a use for a large masted galleon on a landlocked lake, but if I don't lean into this, I feel I will go mad. Oh, what's this? Caravans already? How the time flies. Oh, by all means, visit the boat before coming in. It's not like we've been waiting a year. Hello as usual, your highness. What is it this year? King throwing ancient scrolls at flamingos? Oh, straight to business as usual. Uh, what do we want next year? You know what? I'm feeling malicious. More cow cheese. Oh, fine, and we'll get some iron. Our glorious relic shimmered requires splints and goblets. Probably for the king to juggle. Anu Zesh... No, she didn't stick around this year. Wonder what's crawled up her doublet. To trading, anyway. We've cobbled together the usual conglomerate, if you'll excuse the puns. So what can we get? Caged cows and sheep. What utter nonsense is this? Yes, we asked for cows and sheep, and yes, I understand that you only brought the one horse, but I can't help but think a length of rope and the livestock's own working legs might have allowed you to bring more than just a few animals and not cripple your horse. Other dwarves on this plane of reality dropped on their heads at birth. Never mind, never mind. Let's just get these animals into the field at least. They're how much? Are they special sheep? Do they perhaps shear themselves? No? Oh, then why? The difficulty of fulfilling our order. So we're to pay ten times their worth because you forgot that sheep can walk. It's at times like these that I wish the dwarves could actually hear me. I guess we're buying the sheep. And you know what? I'm not letting a breeding pair of beeves go either. Uh, let's dig a little deeper into our supplies and get them. Still not enough. Okay, deeper still. Good. No, I'm not buying the rest of the animals. I don't care how knackered your horse is. And no, you aren't getting the traditional dwarven farewell. Push off, you jelly brain thieves. And I've just remembered we already had a bull. I must have had my omniscience turned off. Ahem. Look! The dwarves have finished the shipyard shack. A lovely little building, I must admit. And you know what? I have to admit one other thing. Pointless and ridiculous and, and, and just plain stupid as the project is... The boat's not looking too bad either. They've completed what I believe is called the hold and are soon to start on the deck. 
awful lot of room in there now I'm coming to look at it. I wonder if we could use the boat as a storeroom and not have to build that other one we had planned. Oh, and for those who might not be with me in my opinions, please allow me to remind you that Labour Lord is on the banks of the Silken Waters, a landlocked lake, weeks of travel from the nearest decently sized body of water. Add to that fact that not a single dwarf here has ever even seen a boat before, coupled with everybody's inability to swim. Honestly, I'd say this was the cat's doing, but I'd have to ask, to what end? Uh, speaking of ends, the dwarves are just about to add a little final flourish to the bedroom lair. We've some statues by Degel, both of which are, of course, of niche. But the thing I want to talk about is the interesting design our miners decided upon. It's a little stylized, of course, but still fairly easy to discern the shape of two recumbent figures laying top to tail beside one another. The dwarves have named it the Brothers Blue. After the story, it is an homage to. The dwarves of the Rase's Kel have many traditional folktales, of which the Brothers Blue is... Uh, certainly a part. Normally, I wouldn't recount a full tale, but it's notoriously short and hence goes like this. There were two brothers who, through a fairly uncomplicated series of events involving alcohol and the laughably small chance at promiscuity, found themselves in a drafty shack and their underpants. They decided to snuggle for warmth, but their fragile masculinity led to top and tailing, hypothermia, death, and finally, sadly, ridicule. Well, I must say, the more I interact with the dwarves of this reality, the more I am minded of the old adage regarding stones and glass houses, or where mocking intelligence is concerned, anyway. But, morbid inspiration aside, I'm rather pleased with the result. It's a little bland, colour-wise, but it's warm and decidedly dwarvish. No, oh, and while we're here... I think Degel might actually be getting worse. On to some surprisingly exciting news regarding the boat. Uh, here we have it, with the upper deck completed. You can see I did indeed utilise this lovely space for storage. The neatness of it all really has this whole enterprise growing on me. Would I have preferred almost any other dwarf brain scheme? Undoubtedly. But one must make do. I'm thinking that perhaps there may even be a little too much space. With another floor's worth of area to play with, perhaps we could create a new mess hall for the dwarves to eat and play within. The deck is looking nice too. We've even got a couple of ballistae to discourage any third party from initiating an attack. Hear that, various assortment of modest lake-dwelling critters? As you can see from the stairs, there are plans for further building work, which we shall get to later, because I've just happened to glance toward the lake shore and I'm utterly baffled. Fish! A wall of... of, of fish! Lining the edge of the lake. I've thrown up a temporary stockpile nearby to clear them. But how on earth is it possible for our fisher dwarf to have caught so much? The cats are going mad, but that should come as no surprise considering. Where is our fisher dwarf? Who is our fisher dwarf? Oh, oh, this is rather funny. It would appear that due to an amusing similarity in name to one of our better known citizens, I have completely overlooked our fisher dwarf. They're called... Hmm... Well, it's Olon, I know that much. But there's something strange going on with my notes. Blasted second-hand infinite cosmic power! Well, I don't need my notes to see that they're a legendary fisher dwarf. Probably something to do with my overlooking them, leading to three years of uninterrupted fishing. Seems wasteful to change their profession now. But we shall have to get a shack set up to process the fish. Ah. 
And there it is. Nothing fancy, just four walls and a roof. It's another superterranean structure, whatever its size, but with more important things to focus on. Ah, do you know, it's been a while since I've just stopped and watched Label Yord. So I'm only just now noting the rather ridiculous amount of cats we actually have. Just goes to show how badly things can slide when you're focused on the wrong things. We'll have to start up the butchering again. Oh, the Queen is back, with the traders not far behind. Two visits in one year? But it's autumn again? Oh, really focused on the wrong things. Well, anyway, welcome, welcome. I would wait in the armoured peach, your highness. Or you can chase Nish around the boat. Certainly an option. There we are. Things are going to be a little rushed, I fear. We'll request cow cheese. Not as a joke this time. It would appear the dwarves have grown quite fond of it. Beyond that, we are unbelievably self-sufficient. We've enough fish to feast for a year. And Nish has been busy gathering, so our drinks are holding firm. Relic Shimmered want toys and headwear. I see that impending elvish apocalypse is still causing concern. Oh yes, Anu's Ashon, your highness. Now, I won't bore you with details about the trading. Suffice to say, we exchanged some rough gems for metal ingots. I would have liked to let Mebzath at them before we let them go, but time really has been running away from us. All the building and planning... I think we should calm things down for a year or so. Give everybody a nice long rest. Ha 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 ha! The Queen must have heard me. No rushing off this year, I see. Ah, well. With all that said, I think we've spotted a good time to put our metaphorical pens down. The dwarves have completed the little galley dining room on the boat, and it's getting to the point that I keep needing to rein in my excitement at seafaring escapades in our future. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we can get a dozen wagons between the supports and roll the thing to the sea. Silly idea. Oh, it's a busy little place, our label yard. Ah, I'm just so proud of the dwarves. Our ridiculous, industrious, swashbuckling little dwarves. With the soft sighing of the wind off the lake, we can relax into another fond farewell. Anu's Eshon, my friends. Anu's Eshon. That was a nice guy. What? Oh, yeah, he's all right. Somebody what I would happily like, comment, and subscribe to. What? Ah, oh, he gave you money to say that, didn't he? No. He gave me cut.